Okay, guys, we are going to work on some more complex numbers. This time we're going to be talking about the conjugate. Um, and this is something that helps you simplify when you have a rational expression. Um, so all the conjugate means is that you take and change the sign in the middle. This is based on, remember what happens when you had the difference of perfect squares, like if you had x minus 2 and x plus 2. Remember when you foiled those out, you got your x squared in the front and your negative 4 in the back. But what happened to those two middle terms? They canceled, right? You had a negative 2x and a positive 2x. And they always canceled each other out. Well, that's what this is. The conjugate of negative 5 minus i is going to be negative 5 plus i. You want the difference of squares set up here. Leave the first term alone. Change the sign in the middle. Leave the last term alone. Okay, and then foil it out. And what's going to happen is the same exact thing. You're going to get that first term. You're going to get that last term. And those center terms are always going to cancel out. So I have negative 5 times negative 5. And that's going to be 25. Then I have negative 5 times i, so that's a negative 5i. And a negative i times a negative 5 is a positive 5i. There's my cancellation. And negative i times positive i is negative i squared. Okay? And that's going to end up being 25 plus 1. Because you have a negative here, and remember that i squared is negative 1. So I have a negative, negative 1. So that gives me 26. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a number in on this one. Let me, I'm going to say negative 3 plus 2i. All right. And I'm going to tell you now that this is going to end up as 13. It's going to end up as 9 plus 4. It's always going to be the square of the first, just like it was here, and the square of the second, and you're going to add them together because it's going to be that i squared, right? Let's look at it. So I have negative 3 minus 2i, right? <clears throat> only one sign gets changed. All right, so negative 3 times negative 3, there's my square out front. I have a positive 6i and a negative 6i. They've canceled each other out. That's by design. That's why we're using this whole conjugate thing. And then on my last, I have a negative 4i squared. So what is that i squared? That's my negative 1. So I have 9 plus 4 gives me 13. And that's going to work out that way every time. Okay, so when do we use this? If you have a rational expression, let's say we have 65 plus i over i. Well, what's going to be the conjugate of that? Negative i. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a 1 out of that conjugate. Negative i, negative i. Okay? All right, so now I've got negative 65i <clears throat> minus i squared, and I've got a negative i squared on the bottom. All right, negative i squared. What is that? i squared is negative 1, so a negative i squared is going to be a positive 1. So I have negative 65i plus 1 over 1. And rewriting that in our, remember we write them in standard form of a plus b i. So it's just going to be 1 minus 65 
I. Okay, the whole point is we're going to get these I's out of the denominator. Remember when you had to do those radicals, like if you had 5 over the square root of 2, you had to do the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, and then that just become a 2. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're getting rid of that I. Um, so let's try, what if I have 5 minus I? over 9 plus i. So down in my denominator, I have that i. I have 9 plus i. I want it gone. I want to do this business right here. So what's the conjugate of 9 plus i? 9 minus i. Okay. Going to FOIL both top and bottom. I have 45 minus 5i minus 9i plus i squared bottom 81 minus 9i plus 9i minus i squared so what do i get up top here i've got a minus one so minus 1 and a positive 45, that gives me a 44, minus 14i, negative 5i, negative 9i. Now, I have cancels here and a plus 1 here over 82. <clears throat> now, remember... You have three terms, 44, 14i, and 82. If you can't do with all four terms, then you can't do it at all. But since it, I can get a 2 out of all, then I'm going to divide everybody by 2. And I've got 22 minus 7i over 41. And to write that more in my standard form of a plus bi, I'm going to say 22 over 41, oops, not plus, minus 7 over 41 i. Okay, just writing it in standard form. Same answer, there's no difference in those answers, but just the standard form. That's what they'll probably want you to type in when it comes to math lab. Okay. All right, let's look at when I have to um, solve a quadratic equation. So let's say I have x squared minus 6x plus 13 is equal to 0. Well, 13 isn't going to factor, and I could, normally I would, um, well, let's just go ahead and do that. We're going to complete the square. I was going to use this, use the formula, but I think I'm just going to complete the square. So I'm going to say x squared minus 6x equals a negative 13, right? All right. Remember to complete the square, we have to do b over 2 squared. So negative 6 over 2 squared gives me a 9. Negative 3 squared gives me a 9. So I'm going to add a 9 here, and I'm going to add a 9 here. So now I have x minus 3. Remember when you complete the square, it's just the two square roots and the sign in front of b. And that gives me a negative 4. All right, square root of both sides. So I have x minus 3 equals plus or minus 2i. <clears throat> and x equals 3, because I'm going to add that 3 to both sides. Plus or minus 2i. Okay, and sometimes these will not be a square number and you can't leave it out so it would just be still up under the radical not a problem either way 
Um, what if I had 10x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals 0? Let's use the quadratic formula. Remember that is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a, right? So this is my a, my b, and my c. So I've got negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 10 times 1 over 2 times 10. Negative 6. I get 36 minus 40. So again, that's going to be a negative 4 over 20. So I've got negative 6 plus or minus 2i over 20. All three of them, I can take a 2 out, and it's got to be all three. So if I divide each of these by 2, I'm going to have 3 plus i over 10 and 3 minus i over 10 for my solutions. Okay? All right, and that is 1, 3. So we're going to call that quits now.